We'll begin this introduction to the CRAM tool by focusing on the basic data of the module. Here in the top left, we get to see the name, the tutor group size, number of hours and number of weeks. We also get to see the expected number of home students and overseas students, the income from those students, and an estimate of the cost per day for a senior and junior member of staff. In this model, we're anticipating the number of home students remains constant over three runs. However, we're expecting the number of overseas students increases from five in run one, and then remains constant from run two onwards. This model takes no account of changing inflation. So for example, the income we expect to derive from students remains constant over the three runs, both the home and overseas students. Similarly, the cost per day for a junior and member of senior staff remain constant. So what does this tell us in terms of the way in which the students might benefit from this course? First of all, we get to see the different kinds of learning types that students would expect to encounter on the course. For example, here we see that students would expect to spend 33% of their time in practice, 14% in inquiry, and so on. This pie chart gives us a nice overview of the different learning types that students would expect from the course. Similarly, below that, the learning experiences that students would expect range from personalised, approximately 16%, to social, to 12%, the remainder, 72%, being the same for all students. Below that, we get to see the number of hours that we expect to spend supporting and preparing for this course. We can see that the number of hours in preparation for the first run is really high, and that decreases dramatically over the second and third runs whereas the number of support hours increases slightly from the first to the second run because of the increase in student numbers. Finally, let's take a look at the summary. Here we can see an overview of the number of students, the number of hours and the income and cost required to support this module. An interesting aspect here is the difference between income and cost. We can see that in the first run the difference is minus 24,000. The second run we enter into positive territory with almost 5,000 and in the third run almost 10,000. Based on this we would expect to re recover the cost of the first run after about run 5. But what would happen if we were to change the number of students? Let's say we increase the number of home students from 10 in run 1 to 20 in run 2 to 30 in run 3. Similarly, let's increase the number of overseas students from 5 in run 1 to 10 in run 2, to 20 in run 3. Now let's take a look at the impact on the charts. The learning types have not changed, because we haven't changed the way in which this course is delivered. The teaching and learning activities have remained constant. However, the number of hours has increased in run 3 significantly. This is because of the increase in number of students. If we take a look at the summary, we can see now that in run 3, Combined with run 2, we have more than covered the cost in run 1, which is mainly the cost of preparing for the course. So this is just one simple example of how the tool enables you to experiment with different ideas about how you might run the module.